You're listening to Stories Behind the Songs with Chris Blair. For more information, check out chrisblair.com. Hey, everybody. I'm Chris Blair, and here's another episode of Stories Behind the Songs. And on this week's episode, I sat down with one of my great friends, Cameron Bedell. Uh, I've known Cameron for years and years, and I just I love this guy. Uh, he came to Nashville from Wichita, Kansas, to attend Belmont University. He grew up surrounded by music uh, with experience singing in show choirs and barbershop quartets. You're going to hear all about how that started his career after graduating, moving to Nashville, and then working at uh, one of the most iconic restaurants back in the day for Music Row, uh, Taco Mamacita. I don't really want to admit how many times I've spent my afternoons over at Taco Mamacita eating way too much. It's great food, and I uh, just I loved that place. Um, as he was serving there, he met so many songwriters and country artists because, like I said, it's just kind of, it was the hangout on Music Row. And one of the people that he met was Liz Rose, um, and he ended up signing to Liz Rose Publishing about four years after moving to town. You're going to hear all about that. You'll hear also hear the story and the meaning of his smash number one song, Down Home, that he wrote for Jimmy Allen and how culture was a big influence for it. Uh, He also touches on his experience working as a producer for Tierra Kennedy, a cut he has with Haley Witters, and the many ways that he stays busy and connected to the industry. Um, It's been awesome watching him kind of from early days playing the listening room and other shows around town and and just becoming great friends. Um, He's just, he's got a huge heart and he's so talented in both writing and producing. It was such an awesome time having Cameron on to tell his stories and uh, I hope you like it too. You can listen to this episode of Stories Beyond the Songs anywhere you find podcasts. And as always, please help us by spreading the word. Let everybody else know how much you enjoy these episodes. Give us a like, follow, share with your friends, all of that. Uh, We appreciate the support and can't thank you enough. Let's get to it. This is Cameron Bedell. Hey, everybody, here's another episode of Stories Behind the Songs. I'm your host, Chris Blair, and today I am here with my buddy Cameron Bedell. Yes, sir. What's up, dude? How's it going, man? Glad to have you. Thanks, bro. Glad to be here. Yeah, man. So, um, like all of the other episodes, we're just going to go back to the beginning. So, uh, talk me through, like, uh, where you grew up and, like, how you got into music in the first place and then get me to Nashville. Yeah, so I was... um I tell everybody when I was in, I don't know, maybe what was it, fifth grade, I think, is when you could like do like band or choir. Yeah. And then the next year was middle school. So you had to, it was an elective. You did not have to do it. And my music teacher was like, and my choir teacher was like, um, raise your hand if you're going to do choir next year. And I was like, I'm out, dog. I do sports, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, hey, I, she came up to me and she's like, I just really, I mean, it would mean the world to me if you were to just, just try it next year. Just try to do it as an elective. You'll, you'll. It's, it's a lot different than choir at this level, you know. I was like, we'll see. I ended up doing it, and the rest was kind of history because that next teacher I had, um, Mrs. Sims, was very like, put me in, you know, gave me solos and stuff like that, and I just kind of like. Found it. I was like, I guess I can kind of sing a little bit, like you know. And it was kind of like a big startling thing for me. So, music all of a sudden, as you know, it's in sixth grade as a twelve year old, kind of like, I was like, man, I could, I can do this. So I used to take these CDs. We'd get singles, and so it'd be like Usher, "You Make Me Wanna," or Casey and JoJo, whatever it was. And they'd have the song, the instrumental, and then like a um, a remix or something on it. And I'd take those instrumentals and I'd write my own songs to them, you know. And so that turned into me asking for like some like software for Christmas or some like music making software. Yeah. Uh, but I didn't have a computer, so I used my dad's work computer. <laughs> he was so annoyed about that. <laughs> but he kind of like he's a music musician too, so he like he'd use it too, you know. Yeah. So, but I just kind of took it over, you know. And I'd start recording myself, and then I was like, well, I don't like any of these sounds in here. I was like, I need to learn how to play guitar. So there's a there's a guitar in my brother's room that he never played, and I just picked it up and kind of taught myself and you fast forward like a year later i'm i'm recording my own songs and then i'm i you know i realized i can like bounce these as audio files and put them on a cd and hand them out and so that's what i did 
and then I'd play coffee shops and hand out my CDs and and I tell everybody I'm like it's so funny because by the time I was in my freshman in high school I was playing um, basketball on the um, uh, well this actually probably would have been my junior year um, I, we went to play our rival playing varsity basketball they went to play our rival and when I got up to the free throw line the other team I went to church with a lot of them yeah you know, the other student section and they were like singing my song to try Dude, to throw me on. off yeah <laughs> and i was like well jokes on you because you guys know my stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know? yeah and i'll just never forget that and that was like that's like my one of my like core memories of of like being somebody that could write and make music that affects people or whatever you know yeah so did you make the shot um yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I. Who knows? Golly, I was I was mesmerized at that point. Um, but I wanted to go to. Co- I didn't know what I was going to go to college for. So I um I ended up getting a scholarship. Everybody was going to state school, you know, Kansas, K State, you know, all that stuff. And I was like, ended up getting a scholarship to a junior college, um, called um, Butler County Community College, and it was for a uh, show choir. A lot of people don't know this about me, but uh, I went and I was uh choreographer for the group <laughs> and a uh, I sang barber I sang baritone in the barbershop quartet there too and then when I got there they also I also got to write some songs for the choir and um and score and score them as well which is really cool that's so awesome that was a whole new thing I learned yeah and um while I was at while I was at Butler I continued making my own music and um and got kind of like you know a, a, a growing like popularity around school from I was only I was only one at, at school making my own music, you know? right? And and recording it and putting it out, and people could have it. And so from there, I went to Wichita State, and I tried to study music education because I thought maybe that's what I wanted to do was teach it, you know. But in that time between, I went to Nashville and for the barbershop, like uh, it was like a it was like a final, like a championship or whatever. I don't know, like all the best barbershop quartets went and competed. Yeah. And that's when I went down Music Row and I saw everything and I was like, wait a minute, you mean to tell me there's people inside these houses right here that are writing songs and that's what they do. And I was like, mind blown, you know, I was like, that's what I want. to do." When we get back, I chicken out. I don't come to Nashville. I go to Wichita State and I decide I want to teach. I hated every minute of that year. And it, it was totally God, you know you know, pulling me, yeah. in the, you know, and, and I knew I had to go to Nashville. So I, I, I put in an application for Belmont and I was like, if I get accepted, I'll go to Nashville. And I got accepted and the rest was history. I, I, I moved that next year, broke up with my girlfriend and said, I'm starting a whole new chapter. She's now my wife, but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, I went and um, started at Belmont. And I was able to do a couple of showcases at Belmont, met a ton of great people. And it kind of like, that's where Nashville started for me was Belmont. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It was good. It was a good time. And Belmont's a great place to connect to the, if you're coming to Nashville and you're still in school, like coming in via Belmont is awesome because you're just getting instant access to people and things and community. Yeah. Whereas if you just come here, it's a little tougher to kind of, you should, you know, to get out to writer's rounds and stuff and, and kind of meet your people. It's a little tougher. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. And then I um, worked at Taco Mamacita for four years after Belmont. The Fritos. The, oh, yeah. Oh, oh dude. dude the Sloppy this. Jose. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, I worked there on Music Row. So it was like Music Row. They called it Music Row Cafe at the time. You know, yeah. it's like everybody would come in, you know. I mean, I served Chris Stapleton. I served with Brian. I served. Ben Perry, Taylor Swift, um, Liz Rose, um, mul- multiple times, Jack White. I mean, t- everybody. Yeah. And um, and I remember seeing Liz, at, and I was like, I don't know who this lady is. And then somebody's like, Oh, that's she wrote like all the Taylor Swift stuff. And I was like, Wow, really? And she was super sweet. Well, it was amazing foreshadowing because you know, I after my four years of of working at Taco Mamacita, I meet a girl from my sociology class at Belmont who's working at Warner Chapel or I see, I, I see her out and she's like, you should come play some songs for me. So I went and played some songs for her and she's like, I love this. You should meet my buddy, Brad. And Brad happened to be at Liz Rose music at the time. 
And I went and met with Brad and played him some songs. And Brad calls me back after I get done. And he's like, dude, I love you. I love everything about you. He's like, I got to have you over here. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, holy cow. Wait a minute. You want, you want me to sign to Liz Rose? I was like, where's the paperwork? You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and I've been there ever since. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a good family over there and I love it. Yeah. Yeah. She is salt of the earth, man. Oh, dude. She's such a, and she's such a big fighter and proponent for songwriters. Yeah. Like, it's huge. I yeah. Mean, she really does. And, and that's it's really big right now for sure. Yeah. As streaming kind of takes the wild, has become the wild west. It's, you know, been tough for the songwriters and she's, she's fighting Washington for us. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Deal. Yeah. So, uh, so you're, you're signed to, to Liz Rose, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, you're, you're going into the room every day. You are finally doing what you wanted to do, yeah. uh, from those quartet days and you're now in the house. Yes. yes. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. um, which is funny cause it was on music. Our first building was music. Row. Yeah. Like I was on music row in one of those houses yeah. writing songs. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so take me into, uh, you know, obviously this podcast is the stories behind the songs. So uh -huh. you've had, you've had great success. You've uh -huh. written, you've got cuts by multiple artists. Uh -huh. Um, obviously huge song with down home. Yeah. Um, you've also got, uh, the, the Seaforth. uh, yeah. Break so, yeah. So yep. take me into the room and let's, let's talk about the story behind the song. So you pick and, um, yeah. Tell me where the idea well, came from and all of that. Well, so, um, I mean, I, do down home. It's, it, it was, it's co it, I'm, ugh, how do I say this? Signed in 2016. Right. So I'm writing tons of songs. I'm writing like five, six songs a week. And it was more about quantity over quality at that point. So it was like, I'd write 250 songs a year. Whereas now I write more like 120 songs. A year yeah. Because I don't, We'll start stuff and I'll be like, this is just not it. Whereas before I'd finish it. Even if it was a turd, I'd just finish it. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so in in 2020, you know, I'd been in my deal for four years. And I've had I'd 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 had breakups by C fourth already. Breakups went to radio and got pulled within five weeks. Yeah. And it was very frustrating for all parties involved. Um, because it was, we thought, the song. I mean, it's still one of their best streaming songs. Yeah. And um, I had some other cuts with artists like Ryan Griffin. I had just started working with Tierra Kennedy and, um, and getting her career off the ground. She yeah. was, she was starting to really make moves and we started to her first song we wrote together. She streamed like crazy. And, um, didn't you, um, didn't you produce yeah, I, on her I too? Yeah. Her, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. And, um, and so a lot of good things happening, but I really, it was time for me to kind of like, man, like, like let's focus in here and like really start to like dig into these songs and yeah like write some things that matter and like you know whatever and, and then i wrote tough for dylan scott yeah like all, all within that time frame right and covid happens and we're all in our houses and we're all on zoom and so my buddy sends me um a track it's just a music uh, my buddy ryan ball um and 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 that music was just i mean it was literally just like four, five, one, or uh, um, it was just uh, four, one, five, six, and it was just that the whole time. It didn't change, you know. It was just like that, so it, it didn't stick out to me as like, oh man, this is crazy musical. You know what I mean? Yeah. It stuck out to me like this sounds like radio though. You know, it yeah. sounded like something I'd hear on the radio. Yeah. And so I, I, before I even moved forward, I was like, dude, this would be great. Um, let me see what I, he's, he's like, do you think this would be good for a guy named Jimmy out? Cause that me and Jimmy were close friends. You yeah. Know? I was like, I think so. I don't know. It sounds like a radio smash to me, just the music. Yeah. Like, the track he had is almost spot on identical to what you hear on the radio. Like, the very first ed edition of it that he sent me very close to that with the, you know, kind of had the thing. And I was like, so it sounded like a smash, but there was no words to it yet. You know? So, um, I, at the time went up to this, I uh, was in a, uh, uh, in a house over in a Nolensville area. And I went up to my little studio room 
and it's during the day it's covid we're all at home nothing to do you know i only had the one kid at this time um um i was actually just about to have the twins um and i go up there and i'm just thinking about jimmy thinking about what he wants what he needs that i know we had talked about writing a song for his dad and he never had done that it's a hard place for him to get to you know and so I just like, well, maybe I can go there for him and start something that he would want to come on board with. Yeah. And um, I, I don't even know what happened next. So almost like I blacked out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I had this title called Down Home. And I was like, I was like, OK, maybe that could be cool if it's like his dad looking down. And I was like looking down on home, you know, like maybe that could be cool. And then I started writing like the chorus. And I was just like down home oh you know mama's still cooking and down home grits i was like oh that's cool like you can use it down home in different ways and it just spilled out so fast and and then i wrote the first and i started writing down the first verse and i was like i was trying to channel it as i was writing it from a place where it was like if this was my dad Mm. or my grandpa yeah somebody i had lost how do i envision him up there because he was really close to his dad and um and 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 the black community dads are very similar in a lot of ways if you have your dad growing up they have a lot of similarities and like me and jimmy have a lot of similarities from like culturally you know yeah and so i felt like i could connect there and so that's where i kind of went and i was like i was just thinking about my dad you know fishing and stuff like that and i was like and sure enough it connected spot on with jimmy you know the same thing and uh, so I sent it back to Ryan. I was like, what do you think about this, dude? And he's like, whoa, bro, this is special. And I was like, right? I think so, too. It feels like anointed or something. It feels like God gave us this. Like, yeah. It really did. And I've never had a song feel like that, you know? Yeah. And so um, we sent it to Jimmy. We're like, do you like this? He's like, oh, man, I love this. He's like, save this for me, you know? We're like, all right, we'll save it for you. And then um, months go by. He's a busy artist, you know. He's still working on his record. Hey, man, you still want to finish this song? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I do, I do. Like, okay, well, more months go by. <laughs> yeah. More months go by. I guess there was word going around that Brantley Gilbert heard it and wanted to cut it. So we reach out to Jimmy. Hey, man, Brantley wants to cut this song. Is that cool with you? Jimmy, hell no, man, no. No, 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 that's my song. It's like... Okay, well, we still got to finish it, yeah. you know? And so he's like, let's finish it this week. So he comes in. He's like, can I bring my bass player, Tate, in? And I had known Tate. Tate's a great writer. And I was like, yeah, dude, bring him in. Let's finish this thing up. And so Tate came in, helped us finish the second verse. We put some really personal things for Jimmy in there. I wear the number 15 every chance I get. I got a daughter now. I really wish you'd have met, you know, um, uh, driving around my F-150. Bumping Charlie Pride on a back road, you know, it was all Jimmy, you know. Yeah. And um we finish it and he cuts a he cuts a little vocal take on it for the demo. And Ryan texts me or calls me, he's like, dude, he barely made it through that through that vocal. Really? Yeah. And I was like, I was like, I I I do not I do not blame him. Does not surprise me one bit. I was like, that's good though. You know, like that means that song really affects him. It means something to him. And if it means something that much to him, it's going to mean that to a lot of people. Right. And um, and so we get this done. They send it to his record label and record label's like, done. That's your next single. That's that is money. We love it. Once again, a couple months go by, a couple months go by. I were <laughs> like, yo, is this still the thing? You know, yeah, we're still looking, you know, we're still trying to cut some songs and all that. Meantime, I'm going, well. Here's another song to try to cut, you know, and, yeah, you know, yeah. get some other cuts in there. And I was like, okay, well, what's going on? Finally, um, we get, I don't know, I can't remember if we got a call, if we just saw it on Instagram, but we saw the Down Home Tour was what his new tour was going to be. And I was like, oh, it surely needs to be a single. Like, the tour is Down Home. Yeah. The t-shirts, his emblem, everything. And, and, uh, we still don't know. And then finally he texts us and he's like down home to radio October 1st or something like that. And I was like, Oh, finally. Like I, at this point I had two songs go to radio that did not work. And now I'm getting another chance at radio with a song that I'm like, 
okay, this artist already has three number ones. Yeah. Like this is, and I know how special this is. This has got to work. Yeah. Um, sure enough, it debuts on the charts and, and just has a, has a nice long life on the charts. Climbs slowly, climbs slowly. He starts playing it out. I start seeing it on the Today Show. I see it on the, all the award shows. I get to go to Bridgestone when he opens for Carrie Underwood. And I see the whole crowd and him singing down home this song I wrote up in the, the top floor of my house over. In Nolan, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's just a surreal, unbelievable thing. Yeah. To watch a song do that. I mean, you know, I had heard you playing it uh -huh. for a long time right. here. Right. Um, and, uh, but, you know, we kind of, we kind of knew some of the stuff going on behind the scenes, but like for right. us, um, you know, we don't know the months and months of, uh, you know, all oh, that. Oh, I know. Yeah. And I remember like, as soon as I, as soon as I like saw and, and like heard what was happening, it like from, from my shoes, it was like so quick. Yeah. And I was texting yeah. you during yeah. award shows, like, bro, like, what dude. is happening right <laughs> now? Like, this yeah, is amazing. I so I know that's yeah. so true. That's a great point actually. Cause to to everybody else it is like holy cow like didn't you just write that song and it's like no oh, no but yeah, I, yeah. I, I see where you can see that um to me it's like i'm counting minutes over here you yeah, know what i mean yeah and i'm watching it go up the charts and you know songs do die in the 20s they die in the 40s like they don't all go to number one right and i had people from back home that i used to work with back in like college you know and high school and uh, I heard that song. I had no idea you wrote it. Like, I loved it before you wrote it. Like, that song means everything to me. You know, old family members coming out of the woodwork go, you wrote that song? You know, it was just crazy. Yeah. Um, it finally, you know, entered the top five around Thanksgiving and Christmas time. And, I, and a lot of people don't know this, but radio has this thing called Freeze. And so we're sitting there going, maybe this thing holds on long enough to go number one right at the end of 2022. And we might be able to get the radio free, so we'll hold for a couple of weeks. And sure enough, a couple of days go by, or a couple of weeks go by. It's like rolling two, or no, number three, number two. Finally goes number one on the week where the freeze happens, and we get the freeze. Yeah. And it was awesome. So we that song went number one at the last week of 2022 and was number one for the first week of 2023. So it was it was sweet, and it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's so fun. cool, man. Yeah. It's great, great, great deal, and everybody was – was was happy and cheering and that was what uh i told Troy cartwright the other day i was like that was the best part of getting to number one was yeah the money's great yeah the the um accolade is great or any kind of poster you get or or award awesome the best part about that first number one at least is the way the town pours into you mm. the amount of people that were genuinely happy for me yeah and proud of me i know how hard you've worked cameron you have no idea i'm so proud of you the amount of love that poured into me from this city was just it was overwhelming yeah it was so it was such a great reminder that you are important loved you know needed wanted you know like that was the best part of it that was the best part everybody yeah. wanted was wanting me to win you know? Yep. So, um, so yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. I think, you know, I, I brought up that point cause I think it's, you know, it, it's important to just point that out of like, um, people are proud because mm -hmm. they do like, we all knew like what you were doing on a daily basis and like yeah. how hard, and for most people out there listening that don't live in this world in Nashville where like they yeah. understand what we do every day. Um, you know, they hear these songs on the radio and, and to them, it's like this, this quick rise of uh -huh. success. And it's like, wow, right. you know, um, I know, but yeah, just to know, like, you know, everybody out there listening, like the, the, these guys go into a room every single day and pull ideas out of the air and, yeah. and create music and lyrics and create these songs every single day. You know, right. and, and then, and then pick the, you know, the, the 10 or so a year that are like, okay, this, yeah, this could be it, you yeah. know? Um, hundred percent. So yeah, it's just, it's, you know, for, for me, I mean, I, I've been blessed to call you a friend for, for yeah. years now. And yep. like, it's just, 
it, it's awesome Thanks, to, to see everything happen, man. <laughs> yeah, it's well, you know, it's it's been this platform we're at right here has been a huge part of my journey. You know, I've been playing songs and auditioning songs. When I say auditioning, you know, I play them here to see how the crowd reacts, you know, for years. Damn near my whole career, yeah. musical career. And I've seen, it's been fun to like play a song from the first day I get it to the day it goes number one on the same stage. And the first day you play it, everyone's going. And then the last time you play it, when it goes number one, everyone's going. <sighs> You're it's right. like you're back on that free throw line and everybody's <laughs> singing it with you. Yeah, yeah, 100%. yeah, yeah. And it's like, holy cow, this is so cool. I've been playing this song for like a year, yeah. you know, and um, it's really fun to watch the process and and to see when you look back, you can kind of start to see all the pieces that were falling in place and things yeah. that were, you know, because you know, especially when you're new, like writing a hit is that's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy, not just because. You know, writing a hit in general, like writing a great song isn't easy. It's not easy because it's more than just a great song. The stars really do have to align. Right. You know, I could have a song in my catalog that is like the house that built or like God bless the broken road or something like that. You know, I could have one of a song like that, that I'm like, oh my gosh, this, how is this not cut? And it just doesn't matter if it's not the right artist at the right time in the right environment. Right. You know, songs just kind of have that life of their own. Yep. You know. And what kind of day the, the publisher is having yeah, when they the hear mood it. they're in. Yeah. Like, yeah. The person like, that, yeah, it's like, who's singing this demo? Oh, that person? I don't like him. Pass. Yeah, you know? Yeah. It's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> you know? So it's, there's so many gatekeepers and, and little loopholes and, and obstacles it has to go, a song has to go through, you know? Yeah. Not all the time, but I'd say 99. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so yeah. And it's, it's, it's been fun to play that song um out like on the like when i go back home or like out of i I do like these like college shows you know Mm -hmm. and like i never know what these kids at college are listening to you know i'm like are they waiting for me to play some tiktok song or something you know and usually they are but i'll pull that out (laughs) and i'll pull that out and someone will come up to me and they'll be like hey i love that song you play you know it's like well i I, that i played it because i wrote it and they'd be like what do you mean (laughs) you know like they don't even understand and i'm like well, I, I wrote that song for that artist, and that's you know that's that's my song. <laughs> They're just like, what? You know, they don't even under it doesn't contemplate. And I, and I was like, I get it. Like at that age, I was that way too. I didn't know they were songwriters. Yeah, but dude, how cool is that? Like that you could be inspiring somebody at these college shows, just 100%. like when you drove down Music Row and we're like, all these houses here, people go in there and 100%. write those. Like, I had no idea. Yeah, yeah. That's so awesome, man. Yeah, it just kind of comes full circle, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. This episode is brought to you by Brit Skin Beauty. Located in the beautiful Indulgence Medi Spa in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, Brittany is the go-to esthetician for facials, dermaplaning, microdermabrasion, waxing, lashes, and any skincare products and consultations. So many people in the music industry use her frequently, and her work speaks for itself. To schedule your next consultation or make an appointment, visit BritSkinBeauty.com or send an email to BritSkinBeauty at gmail.com. Well, you want to play part of it? Yeah, dude, I'll play some. Let's see. It's uh, I haven't really sang, I haven't really sang much today, so the uh, I'll take it down a half step. The original, Jimmy sings high. I think the original, I think they ended up taking it up because he's got such a high voice. Yeah. Um. I bet you're up there making new friends I'm pretty sure you love them every minute If there's a golden pond full of fish I bet you already caught everything in it I know you're making everybody laugh with the jokes I know you're full of nothing but the best kind of old Shining a light up there with a big old smile Hard as I can. I met a girl, bought a house, put a nice little payment down home. Still, where my heart is, is down home, kid. It's just how you let me steal 
second verse is the more Jimmy step up. Uh, then, uh, then the day down here that goes by, then I don't climb up in my head for 50 on a back road bumping Charlie Pride. Yeah, every song's like you're right there with me. I got a daughter now, I really wish you to me. Yeah, she's walking now, but I know you see every step. I wear the number 15, every chance I get. So when you're looking through the clouds, that you can bend down on. You know, mm, yeah. So good, oh, yeah. dude. And, and uh, and I, I love playing that song, man, because it's, it's so easy, and I just kind of get lost in it. And I love it. Yeah. 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 There's your little snippet. I love it, man. I think I was even playing the wrong chords, but <laughs> <laughs> it starts on the one. I'm not yeah. even kidding. I'm pretty sure it's. Yep. It's definitely one. Five, six, four. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounded great, man. But you can play it over any chord. That's right. That's right. Go. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, you that that's been uh, that's been huge. Um, and then talk about like what's been going on lately. Yeah. Um, so since that, you know, it's like you know maybe this opens some big door for me to kind of like get in rooms with you know bigger writers and bigger artists and. And really, like, it kind of does, but it kind of doesn't. And it also kind of doesn't matter. Like, it kind of, what it does, I think, more so than that, is gives you a confidence that you've done it now. Yeah. You know, like, like go, go, you don't have to, like, go find it again. You know how to do it. Right. You know? Um, and so going into rooms with that confidence has been good. But it wasn't that way at first. Once that song went number one, and I felt that love from the city, it was like crack. Like, I wanted another one so bad that like I'd go into rooms and it'd be the first thing on my head uh, on my mind was like okay how do we write another radio hit like and it just ate me up for months I was just like it t made writing not fun you know like or really? not enjoyable for a little bit I had to like switch my mindset up because it was eating me up yeah it was too much it felt like I had to like I had to follow it up quickly and I had to get another song to radio quickly mm. in order to keep the buzz about me going and yeah. get my career going faster and stuff like that. And you just felt this, this, this false sense of urgency, you know? And finally I hit a wall where I was kind of like, yeah, this isn't, I'm, this is not productive. This is, this is not how, this is not how I need to be looking at this. This sucks. I do not like the way this feels. Switched my whole mindset up and kind of got back to me and and um, um, I had this ride on the books with Lee Miller and Nicole Gallion. And great right, right? Yeah. Great writers, both of them. And it kept getting pushed. I mean, it's been getting pushed for like a year and a half. We just wow. can't make the dates work. Finally, it works about six months ago. We write this song. When we get done with the song, I'm like, I like the song. It sounds like vintage, like 90s country. And it's a song called I'm In Love. And we go uh, a couple of days later to pitch it. And they pitch it to Haley Witters. And Haley's like, I'm like, oh my gosh, that's perfect for Haley. And she cuts it, puts it out. And now they're talking about maybe it could be, you know, a single one day, you know? And it's like, hey, I love it. I don't count any of those things I don't, until things happen. Yeah. But that's probably my most recent cut, that um, big cut, you know? Yeah. Haley's killing it right now. She's um, on the road playing like crazy. She just had everything she ain't. Her song uh, went top 15. Yeah. Um, so her career is really blossoming and she's somebody that was at Belmont, like leaving Belmont when I got there. So like, she's been grinding for some time and she's been putting that work in, man. She was, I remember she, when she signed, I was still at Taco Mama when she signed her first deal. I was like, Oh, that Haley girl signed. Like, she's good. Like that makes sense. You know? Yeah. She reminded me of like Miranda Lambert at the time, yeah. you know? And then she, you know, she's always had this like Dixie chicks kind of vibe to her and, and she was always really good, but like it just took time for her to find who she was and herself, and um, she's killing it right now. So yeah. hopefully that song does well. It's already out there and it's it's streaming pretty well, and everybody seemed to love it. So yeah, so yeah. And then um, um, the Tierra Kennedy project, um, uh, with Big Machine, that um, her first single just went to radio. Um, I didn't write this song, but I did produce it. Yeah. Um, so you know, there's a chance I'll have more songs on radio this pat this next year. Yeah. Not just as a writer, but as a producer too. Um, and um, it's called Jesus, My Mama, My Therapist. And it's reacting really well. And people are loving it. 
And and then I pulled out my old choreography days and we did a dance to it for TikTok. And Come I on, it. <laughs> you know you know we're gonna get that. We've got to we've we've got to get a little snippet of that that we're gonna put on our Instagram. So yeah, everybody listen out there, yeah. go check out our Instagram at SBT Songs, and you're gonna see a picture of Cam dancing. We're gonna make this happen. Oh gosh, should have never said anything. Um, but yeah, her project will come out probably early next year, and it's something that has been a you know, a pride and joy of mine to produce. And, yeah. And, yeah. I'm really happy to have that project be out in the world because it's really, cool. yeah, I'm really excited about it. But yeah. Yeah, man. You've, uh, you've, you've been producing, um, for a while. Yeah. And, well, uh, you know, like my own stuff as well. So it's yeah. like when I found Tierra or when I met Tierra and we started working together, it was kind of a no brainer. Yeah. And I work for a lot. There's a lot of times I'll write songs for people and, and I'll, I'll be like, hey, I'm down to take this to the finish line. You know, I write with a lot of girls. I think it's because I have a high voice maybe. And <laughs> and it works. Yeah. But there's a lot of them where we'll finish a song and I'll be like, hey, if you need someone to produce it, like, let me know, you know. Yeah. Um, but I, I and I'll do a little producing here and there. But Tierra is really my own, like, my, my first, like, I produce her exclusively type thing. Yeah. 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 Love yeah. it. Yeah. Well, dude, thanks again for being here. Of it's course. Been a blast. Anytime, um, man. Yeah, we're uh, we're gonna we're gonna uh, as soon as we get off of this episode, we're gonna do this dance. So <laughs> start thinking about it. Um, but before we finish, I always end on the same question. Okay. So uh, knowing what you know now and everything uh -huh. that you've gone through um, from the quartet days to moving to Nashville to COVID to the number one, all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, you go back to eight year old Cameron. What advice do you give yourself today? Definitely going back to that, that age, like thinking back then, like it, it has to be the, the, like, enjoy the journey thing. Like, like, because I do remember so many times feeling stress and unknowing unknowingness of what was to come next or if I was going to be able to do something or get something. And, you know, was I going to get into Belmont? Was I going to be able to come here and write songs? Was I going to be able to write songs that mattered? Was I going to be in one of those houses writing songs? Was I going to write a song that went number one? Was I ever going to go to radio? Always questions and unknowns that yeah. I, I just, you know, and the reality of it is, is if you grind and, and you work your butt off and you just continue to stay in it, you'll find your way. And it's always a thing of if not when, you know, um, or mm. I, I'm sorry, uh, when not if. <laughs> so it's not can I if if I if will I do this? You know, no, it's it's when will it happen? You yeah. know, um, that was my biggest thing with my first publishing deal was like. It's not if it's going to happen or not. It's when it's going to happen, you know? So that you mindset. can just take some take some solace in that and know that, like, it might not be tomorrow, but it's going to happen, dude, you yeah. know? And that's 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 the best advice I was ever given, and I kind of live by that all the time. It's like, no, I know I can do this. It's just not now. It just not, might not be right now, mm. you know? Yeah. But it's going to happen, you know? So. Love it. Yeah, dude. Great advice, man. Thanks, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, dude. It's been a been a blast. <laughs> it has, Appreciate dude. it. Thank so you. So we'll uh, we'll get back and uh, we'll we'll uh, we'll do this again when we're uh, we're talking a big about the big old Haley cut. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I love it. <laughs> All right, sounds good, dude. Well, thank you everybody out there listening. Uh, check out our liner notes on how to follow Cameron. And um, this has been another episode of Stories Behind the Songs with Cameron Bedell. We'll see you next time. This has been an episode of Stories Behind the Songs with Chris Blair. For more information after the show, head over to chrisblair.com. That's where you can find information on these episodes, trailer notes, video links, all kinds of great stuff. Also, make sure to leave us a great rating on iTunes. Like and follow us on Spotify, YouTube, wherever you listen to podcasts. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. I really hope that you think this show is awesome and we really appreciate the love and support. I promise to keep gathering great content 
and continuing to sit down with more amazing songwriters and artists as we grow. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks for the support. We'll see you next time.